The weatherman said a big snowstorm's coming. So I'm doing all the work I can outside before I have to move in by the fire. This is a little diamond inverted cone that I used to separate the segments of the rattles. Just go in here like that. And then after that I rub uh, another one this way to kind of round out each one of those. And then I'll smooth it down further. But I'll show you how this one works first. Run it in here. And that's a really fine diamond. It'll help me round out the, the rattles just by running it back and forth. As it skips along, it kind of carves this out a little bit, just naturally. And it just sort of rounds everything out. So I just... dodge a little snowstorm uh, come in and do some of this work inside but what I've done is laid out my uh, knurled hand grip and the way I do that is I divide these lines up evenly so I'll start like right here and make a line and right up here and make a line and then I go opposite, like make sure I go, you know, 180 degrees there and make a line and a line. And then I go the 90 degree and do the same thing. And then I divide those up evenly, just kind of eyeballing them. So I have a square a rectangular grid. Then on these lines, I take my measuring tape or ruler and I measure out this is exactly eight inches so a half an inch for each one of these lines and I just make reference marks throughout and I measure from from this line measure out and then I got a pretty even job when I get up here and then I just go diagonally filing the lines out so I just go from corner to corner of the little rectangles you know and then when I get that all done I just file those pencil marks off and then sand them off later it ends up making a pretty nice knurled hand grip and you can deepen those grooves up as far as you want and make uh, really neat faceted diamond shapes out of them and stuff and then I've got what I do on my face when I start doing the head is I start drawing out the main scales the shapes where the nostril is and that 
and then over here where this scale goes up next to the eye and I do that on both sides and then I establish where my eye is this will all be carved away but I still needed to to see where to start my eyeball so that they're not gotched so then I take uh, I got my bullet this is a 223, I think, size, and I've just serrated the, the end of it with my little Dremel tool, or my little handpiece, and a diamond burr, and I just put little saw teeth on the end of that uh, bullet casing, and then wherever I've established that my eyeball is going to go, I lay that in there and start twisting it back and forth and I'll do that till I get kind of about at least a sixteenth of an inch deep do that on both sides A little bit tricky to get it started. Once you get it started, it goes pretty good. Anyway, I'll go on in. I, I missed that one a little, so I'm going to adjust it back a little bit. Back here. That should work. And then this one I can come forward if I need to and kind of even things out. Another trick that I do whenever I'm trying to look for symmetry, I'll either use a mirror on this side and look through and look at the mirror, or I'll sight right straight down it and cross my eyes until the two sides kind of come together in the center and I can compare that way whether or not I got them symmetrical. So just a little tip there. What I use to round out the eyes is these concave jade carbon burrs, which I've got, you know, different sizes of them here that I use for all kinds of different, different things. If you haven't got any of these, they're really handy to get. They're not expensive at all. Uh, you can pick them up on Amazon or somewhere. And I think I spent less than 10 bucks for that whole set right there. And I use them all the time.
at all them dead gum birds. <coughs> Well, I've burnt in 512 scales to this point with a 2.5 millimeter razor tip scale burner. And I'm ready to switch scale sizes now because the diameter of the snake is getting thicker now. And as it gets thicker, I keep changing scale sizes a little bit. So now I'm going to a 3 millimeter scale. And I'll go as far as I can with that till it looks like I need to change sizes again. So at this point I've, I've made 1,088 scales and I've gone up another size, so this is the three and a half millimeter scale size, and I think that's the biggest I'll go. And then I'll have to, when I get down here, I'll have to go backward and start making them smaller again. I can't tell you how many times I had to shovel the sidewalk with this storm. The snow just kept on falling. I've gone back down a scale size as the snake's body gets narrower. Then I start going the other way with smaller scale sizes. Well, I got all of the scales burned in to my rattlesnake, uh, 5,888, for those that might want to know how many scales are on a rattlesnake. And this is a kind of a short one too, sometimes I make bigger rattlesnakes and they'll end up with being near 10,000 scales on them. Whenever I start... Uh, uh, burning the scales I wonder sometimes what I got myself into and, but you just have to keep persevering and finally you get them done what I've got next to do is uh, I've got to put the paint job on and this is going to be a great basin rattlesnake so something I'm real familiar with around here so it'll have that kind of a pattern on it and uh, then I've just got to stain the shaft, put some polyurethane on it, sign it. This is uh, number 119. And we're ready to go. Anyway, thanks a lot for following along, guys. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time.